This video is going to show you how you can get started with Android Things. We'll select a hardware development board for you to work from and show you how to flash it with Android Things, getting it up and running ready for developing your apps. Let's get started. Building hardware devices for the Internet of Things is now within reach for everyone. Even if you've never designed embedded systems, Google provide a hardware solution and an easy to use software development platform based on Android Studio and the Android SDK. The Android Things SDK is made up of two main components the peripheral I.O. APIs and the user driver APIs. The peripheral I.O. APIs let your applications talk to the sensors and actuators that you have connected to your board. Sensors are things like lux meter for sensing light, temperature gauges for sensing hot or cold, or a button for sensing user input. Actuators are things like electronic switches for a smart lock, servo motors perhaps for a robotic arm, or an LED for signaling output to the user. Peripheral I.O. APIs let you use the different industry standard protocols like General Purpose I.O. known as GPIO and Pulse Width Modulization known as PYOM. We'll cover the differences in these and more in a later episode. We'll be using Peripheral I.O. a lot when writing Android Things apps, especially when adding new hardware peripherals. User drivers are the next step after the Peripheral I.O. APIs. In many applications, Peripheral I.O. APIs will be sufficient. However, User drivers give you benefits from the Android framework and any matching sensor APIs. Let me give you an example. If you have a GPS sensor on your board, instead of just using peripheral I.O. APIs to read your location, you can write a user driver. The user driver will read your location data and pass that to the Android framework. You can then use the framework's Fused Location Provider API to get an even more accurate location. This is because the Fused Location Provider will not only use your GPS sensor data, but it will combine this with other location sources, such as Wi-Fi. We'll come back to user drivers in a later episode. As you can see, Android Things allows you to leverage the power of the already amazing Android ecosystem. Further to this, we now have access to all your common open source libraries and things like Google Play services or Firebase. To get started with Android Things, you need a hardware development board. Here we'll show you how to use the Raspberry Pi 3, other boards are available, but I would highly recommend this as your first board to experiment with. Let's talk about why we selected the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is the only board so far with an onboard HDMI output. This means your Android Things apps can have a graphical element to them. A user interface is also handy for debugging and testing. The Raspberry Pi has peripheral hats that you can attach. Hat stands for Hardware Attached on Top. It is a hardware specification for add-on modules for the Raspberry Pi. Hats have several advantages compared to other methods of using peripherals for the Raspberry Pi. Hats allow you to add peripherals with no soldering or dangly wires and are more robust when wanting to move the board around. We can use a hat to avoid having to learn about circuits, resistors and other fiddly electronics whilst we learn the Android Things basics. We'll talk more about hats and circuits in a later episode. 